Hello Father, hello Father Obito here, greetings from the land of Jesus. I'm here to explore more about Jerusalem. So please join me and I have more videos to come. Mabuhay, God bless you and muchas gracias. Dios les bendiga a todos. say anything profound we'll wait till we get inside but just to pay attention to the fact that we're still kind of hovering over the Kidron Valley right obviously if we want to explore any water related story we have to go down the hill okay you'll note that in somewhat of an ironic way we are basically telling this whole story by moving away from the hill of Jerusalem because in fact Really, the essence of the city of Jerusalem is the water source. It is not God, as we have already proven, both textually and archaeologically. There were people who were already living in Jerusalem who did not share our God story, right? So our God story is an add-on to a pre-existing, very physical space in this land that was more than likely here because of the existence of a spring. All of the winter rains and the melting snow, if you get lucky, all come into the Kidron Valley. They filter through the limestone, they hit bedrock, and then the pressure forces them out as a spring. And so whoever that first person was to be wandering in this valley may have noticed that there's water literally coming out of the rock and thought to themselves, this is where I want to raise my kids, right? And that was probably the beginning of Jerusalem. We don't know when, but it clearly is pre-Israelite. As we've seen, the Jebusites were here before the Israelites got here, right? So it may have been a Jebusite who found the spring. The point is, is that once the city becomes the capital of the Israelite empire, we are then going to see the water play a significant role politically, militarily, and maybe even most importantly, spiritually slash ritually, right? So we're going to explore all of those as we go down to the waterfall. Okay, you with me? So we still have more to go down, but we're going to do so in an archaeological way. Yeah. So, first of all, Warren Shaft is not connected. Hey, 
and separate. And then we'll go by water shaft. And then we'll get to the water, but we're not there yet. And then there will be the bypass for those that don't want to get wet. Thank you. That's what I want. Yes. Yeah. You have nothing to worry about. I will inform you before it happens. You won't find yourself sort of in water and wonder why are you there. I promise I'll give you a warning. I try to be nice. We're going to walk inside I don't know if you have that from schedule. It's not hard of it. It's not hard of it, no. But it's close, it's very close. But Wilson Parts is actually located in another room that you have to have a specific uh, reservation for. Okay, right. so, so I'm not doing that with you, but somebody else is doing that. We are going now inside of the party. Okay, all right, we're going in. This is the entrance to an ancient water system called the Warren Shop System, named after Captain Charles Warren, who discovered it in 1867. A tunnel leads to Evon Spring, which emerges at the outside. Yes, the importance of the water and the need for its protection and teaching We think so. Not sure. Yes. Yeah, and also the Yeah. That's also the Yes, same thing. Because the Jordan River begins with three springs. One of those springs comes from the city of Dai. Right where the tribe is in So we think that the Hebrew may come from those two Hebrew words of Yoled and Dan. flows down. No, no, no. The country of Jordan has nothing to do with it. Okay, guys, everybody, come as close as you can. Just do me a favor and back up a little bit. I want you all to be able to see this image on the wall. We have to do this quickly because there's a lot of people trying to get in and we're trying to stay in between all of the groups. This is the image I showed you before. This is the image as it looks more or less today. Okay, it's a little bit skewed. Here's the north-south axis. Here's the north-south axis, right? It's a little bit different, but you can see temples, golden dome, palace, where we got started. Here we're now overlooking the Kidron River Valley. Here's where we're standing, overlooking the Kidron River Valley, okay? The original relationship with water was like probably every human community in history. You had a town at the top of the hill where you felt safe and secure and protected from attack, but where's your water? Down in the valley. So you have to leave your city through a gate, walk down to the valley, get your water, bring it back home, which endangers you because you leave your city walls, right? So clearly everybody would like to find another solution. At a certain point in time, probably during the Iron Age, they developed the proper tools to dig through the earth. Meaning that what we are about to go through is a Canaanite tunnel that was dug from the city of Jebus, Okay, uh, so the Jebusites dig a tunnel from their city to the spring, but instead of going overground, they're going to go underground. We're going to walk through that tunnel now, right? It's, don't worry, there are steps, modern steps. But one thing that we still haven't answered is, is that going to be enough to fool the Assyrian Empire that might come and besiege the city of Jerusalem in order to take it over as a conquest of the, uh, the, the kingdom of Judah? Probably not. So King Hezekiah is going to need to be even more creative than a quote-unquote secret underground tunnel that the Canaanites had dug about four or five hundred years before him. We'll get to that story. For now, we need to move. We're going to go down, not the circular staircase, but the next staircase. You will notice that we have floors above our heads. We are going to be essentially going down the slope into the Kidron Valley, just beneath the surface of the ground. Okay? As we go down, 
please use the railings because it's a very steep staircase. And maybe let me go first, if you don't mind. Uh-oh. Sorry. I was too fast. Thank you. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I don't recommend you go down there either. <laughs> There's a big rock at the bottom that, that may not be so comfortable to land on. What happened to the rest of the group? <laughs> Did they give up? We have an old group. Yeah, I guess.
entering the Izikaya's spring water. That is how cities begin, right? Remember, we're in a land where water is rare and precious. When you find that water source, you don't just walk by it. You build a damn city because you can, right? So that is the water that tells the story of Jerusalem from the beginning through our entire biblical narrative and further. We're going to keep reconnecting to the water again and again and again. So folks that are doing the wet tunnel are going to head down, head into that tunnel, Make sure that you don't have any valuables in pockets. Maybe you should put them up a little higher, like in your backpack. If you're wearing any nice, fancy watches, turn the watch to the inside of your wrist or take the watch off so it doesn't get scraped on the rock. Otherwise, what's your name? Damien. Damien will be in the front. And who's my back? Chris. Chris will be in the back. We'll see you on the other side. Remember, the tunnel was dug for water, not for humans. So you will have to duck at times. It's not tall enough. Have fun. God bless you all. <laughs> right. If you're lucky, we'll see you on the other side. Right. Down we go to the riverside. Right. Somebody has to. Watch your step. All right. Everybody else, you're coming with me. We are going to walk through what used to be the wet tunnel, but then because of Hezekiah, the water got diverted and now it's a dry tunnel. So follow me. Thank you, Chris. Good luck. You're welcome. All right, we are heading this way. <laughs> so amazing how they designed this, huh? Wet and then dry here. Well, they didn't design it wet and dry. Like I said, this used to be wet. This was ah, a water tunnel. Right, that the Canaanites used before Hezekiah dug his tunnel. Ah. And then when Hezekiah dug that one, all the water got pushed that way and this became a dry tunnel. I see. Because Hezekiah didn't need this. Ah, okay. He needed to go get the water to the other side. I see.
just know that they're putting lights. What are they on the front side, guys? It's like a booster. I don't know. Yeah, these lights are coming. Kind of dark, but very interesting place. Don't anybody jump out and play with me. I was thinking about the poison. Make sure if you're in the Holy Land to go to this place. It's a wonderful experience. side now. We survive. <laughs> we survive. <laughs> yes, we do. what's called the Canaanite tunnel, meaning that during the Canaanite period, water flowed through this tunnel in order to make it down to the lower edges of the city and maybe, like I said, to help the farmers in the fields, okay? They were not yet at a stage where they were worried about, nor did they have the technology to, dig through the mountain to get to the other side. So we are still on the same side of Jerusalem that we were when we started. Right? We're on the eastern edge, in the Kidron Valley, looking at the southern extent of the mountain. Okay? So what we're going to do now is basically walk up and over in order to meet the folks coming out of Hezekiah's water tunnel. Let's go, vamos.
It's an old olive tree. It's a very old olive wow. tree. Wow, yeah. can tell. Very, very old. It's an old olive tree here. Together a little bit more and mix the pan. Yeah, we just finished our tour from the tunnel. It was dark, but there are some lights on the ceiling too that can help. And I'm in the front of the olive tree. It's an old olive tree. So thank you for joining me in my journey to the Isikaya's tunnel. Blessings to all of you and have a wonderful day and see you in the next video. God bless. Bye.